Welcome to a Sweetie Cakes and Pies production, coming to you from Atlanta, Georgia. We were tired of shoveling snow and our dead-end jobs, so we picked up everything and moved south. Our new life is great. We have each other, family, and most importantly, cake. Grab a fork and join us on our sweet adventure. Terry and Sweetie Cakes and Pies is my way of torturing all the people around me. Hi, I'm Dan. My chief title is Terry's fiance, but apparently that includes a whole subset of other titles, including chief executive dishwasher for Sweetie Cakes and Pies. I am about to try a technique that I have never tried before, but I have seen other people do on cake shows on TV, where you take a stencil and um, adhere it to the cake or the cake board in this case. Then you take royal icing and scrape it across and pull the stencil back and you have the pattern. Um, so I'm going to test it on the board first, kind of like where the cake would sit so that I kind of get a little practice before I attempt it on the cakes. I'm just putting a little bit of shortening on the back of the stencil. Got my stencil in place with the shortening. It looks pretty solid. I've seen other people use tape, but something about that just doesn't seem edible to me. And I'm just going to scoop on the royal. Scrape it off. Here, let's see if it worked. exact same color. <laughs> I think I'm going to make that a little bit darker brown so it pops out a bit more, but that worked perfect. So I, um, we saw this on TV. They take a stencil and um, royal icing and they put the stencil on the side of the cake and they just neatly put the royal on there and then they peel the stencil off and it looks so pretty and it looks so easy and it wasn't. We, um, I think we've had the wrong kind of stencil. It was a total pain. Like, um, it was a two-person job for sure, but we could have used like six people to do that job, and still it would have been um, really stressful. But um, the final product looked pretty good, so we were happy with it. But it didn't look like uh, either of us thought it would. And the second new technique of the night that I've never done before is a stamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put royal icing on this stamp and then stamp it onto the cake, let it dry, and I'll paint it with gold luster dust. Um, again, never tried this, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to do it on top first because that's going to be the easiest place for me to cover up if it doesn't work. And it didn't. We just have a blob of royal icing. So um, I'm going to reevaluate this and see if I can come up with something that might actually work. Attempt two with the stamp. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit lighter on the icing this time and I'm going to paint it onto the stamp where I want it to go. So let's see if we have any more luck with that. Okay, as you can see, kind of like a barely there covering. And that turned out much nicer. As you can see, we can actually see the leaves and the vines. 
So that's going to be the way that I go with the rest of this tier. Nope, didn't really work so well on the curve. The problem was my hand moved a little, so I think I have to just try to keep my hand a little more still. some leaves here but not all leaves are uh, perfect red like this so for the next batch of red I'm gonna try this technique that I did on the green where I place little pieces of the brown around while I'm rolling it out so it's not quite a swirl but it gets mixed in in an interesting kind of organic way which is what you want if you're making a leaf swirl pattern in but now I can use my cutter and I get a leaf that's partially red partially brown which looks a bit more natural than just all red the cakes are stacked and they've got the brown royal icing on it and royal icing usually dries really really quickly but the cakes are pretty moist and they were sweating a little when I took them out of the refrigerator so the cakes themselves are just not drying thus the royal icing is not drying and I need to paint these with the luster dust so bed is not looking like it's going to be something in my near future all right I slept for a few wee hours and the cake actually dried so I'm gonna get these leaves on and get to the holiday. I just have a lot of problems with making royal icing. I can never get the consistency right. And it should be this really basic, really easy thing, but it's always either too runny or too hard. And in this case, it was really runny and it just didn't dry. And my initial plan was to use the stencils with the royal icing let them dry and then paint them with gold luster dust and they just didn't dry and I had to let it sit overnight um, and I was hoping to maybe wake up really early and paint them the next morning and they were dry by then but I just really had to ditch the luster dust and it still looked really great and looked really fall like but if anyone has some tips on how to get the consistency of royal icing perfect, I would really appreciate hearing them. What are the flavors of the cake? The cake flavors are really interesting. We got very gourmet on this one. The bottom tier here is a ginger snap cake with a pumpkin cheesecake filling. The middle tier is a yogurt lemon cake with an apple compote filling. And the top tier is pecan pound cake with a pecan pie filling. I'm so excited to dig into this cake. And over here we have a pear and cranberry pie. The crust came out perfect looking, so I'm sure that's going to be nice and doughy and flaky. And here we have one of my all-time favorites. It's the candied bacon cinnamon buns. I might in the future have to... Uh, do a whole cake so dedicated to candied bacon cinnamon buns. Everyone who eats them falls in love with them and they are a heart attack in a pastry form but they are so delicious. So here is our Thanksgiving desserts and as my friend Jenny pointed out online some people also eat turkey for Thanksgiving. You tried all the desserts, Alex. Tell us about them. I 
think this one was the best. What's that one? The cinnamon bacon. Not sure. <laughs> Last part is.